as The Money Burns is an original podcast by Nikki Woodard. Based on historical research, this is a deep exploration into what happened to a set of actual heirs and heiresses to some of America's most famous fortunes when the Great Depression hits. Each episode has three primary sections. Section 1 is a narrative story. Section 2 goes deeper into the historical facts. Section 3 focuses on contemporary, emotional, and personal connections. Story Recap While Barbara Hutton travels the South Seas, Prince Alexis Devani returns to Paris and is greeted by Louise Van Allen. Now back to As the Money Learns. Moss Cover. Another set of divorce rumors and scandal abound as another lover has been found. Section 1. Story Love makes the world go round, and young lovers spin it even faster, and sometimes out of control. Isn't it amazing how some people just seem made for scandal? Like they were born into it and thus have it from the get-go. Well, no one probably fits that description more than the ill-fated Titanic baby, the proud scion, John Jacob Astor VI, a.k.a. Jakey, conceived under semi-scandal, then survives the major Titanic tragedy in utero, only to be born and forever plagued by scandal. When it comes to scandal, he hates every minute of it, yet the press and public alike are fixated on him, endlessly referring to his rather sullen, depressed, and bitter demeanor, rarely praising and almost always criticizing him. Jakey wants nothing other than to be left alone to live the good life, to be the epitome of a gentleman like his grandmother, the esteemed Gilded Age Queen Bee, Caroline Astor, would have been so proud to have in her lineage. Oh, if Caroline was still alive, she would nip these scandals fast. She did not like gossip. Only no such luck. In fact, her death leads to the beginning of all the scandal, as the real beginning starts even before the Titanic tragedy and his birth. For that situation, Jakey really can't blame anyone but his parents. Somewhat. His father, John Jacob Astor IV, waited until his mother Caroline's death before daring to defy her biggest fear and divorces his acrimonious, haughty, and beautiful wife, Ava Lowe Willing. Actually, Ava initiated the proceedings. The couple were absolutely miserable with each other, already living separate lives. He in the U.S. with their son Vincent Astor, and she already spending large amounts of time in England with her daughter, Ava Alice Muriel Astor. Upon his mother's death, they gladly parted ways. Now divorce and remarriage had already become acceptable among the 400, with that other Gilded Age Queen Bee, the indomitable Alva Vanderbilt Belmont. Caroline long suffered through her own bad marriage, but luckily widowhood had freed her instead. Even though Caroline suffered dementia near the end, Jack held off getting his own freedom. He already had a sister, Charlotte Astor Drayton, who had caused a big scandal with her indiscreet sexual affair and divorce back in 1892. When Jack finally won his freedom at the age of 46, he went a bit mad over a very young female, barely 18 years old, Madeline Talmadge Force. His quick marriage in less than two years of his divorce to a female less than half his age, and dare say younger than even his college-age son Vincent, became a huge, huge scandal. So much so, the newlyweds fled for a long-extended honeymoon in Europe and the Middle East, visiting as far as Egypt. They traveled on the ocean liner Olympic to Europe. When young Madeline became pregnant, the new condition mandated a return to the States. Thus, they booked passage upon the Olympic sister ship, the state-of-the-art luxury liner, Titanic's maiden voyage. After placing Madeline into a lifeboat, Jack would become the richest man to die in that tragedy on April 15th. 1912. Jack's will was strict and limiting. Madeline got a small cash up front allowance plus a $5 million trust fund, $141.5 million in 2024, and access to the Astor Fifth Avenue mansion as long as she remained unmarried. Daughter Ava got a nice $10 million, nearly $314 million in 2024, an inheritance that which was more than sufficient for her life. 
Son Vincent inherited the bulk of the fortune, which was estimated around $67 million. Today, in 2024, that's $2.13 billion. And there was a stipulation for any unnamed heir, which would be Jakey, for $3 million, or $95.4 million in 2024. To say that Jakey is bitter over the diminished amount cannot be overstated. Furthermore, his young and impetuous mother refuses the money and permanent widowhood to instead remarry her childhood friend and sweetheart, William Dick, in 1916, after which she will continually appeal to the Astor estate to expand Jakey's living allowance to have a more appropriate life due to his station. In her legal complaints, Madeline foots his lavish bills until repayment is possible. Madeline will forever play the titanic victim card whenever troubles for her or Jakey surface. William Dick is an adequate stepfather, and the couple have two more sons, William Force Dick and John Henry Dick. Jakey gets along far better with his two younger half-brothers than his older half-brother Vincent. To say Vincent and Jakey detest each other is an understatement. Vincent constantly hints that Jakey is illegitimate and refuses to give his brother a better portion of the fortune. Jakey spends his life trying to establish his credentials to match his illustrious family name. He is semi-doing better, now graduated from Newport St. George's and on to Harvard. Though not really a good student nor academically inclined, Jakey opts to take a long worldwide trip in 1932. But before heading to Honolulu, he sends a corsage of orchids to New York to Princess Donna Cristina Tolonia of Italy who debuted during the 1931-1932 social season. That 1932 summer, they will meet in the Italian Alps, where they hike, ride horses, dance, and play tennis. Maybe he's trying to be a dollar prince, though titles usually don't flow in that direction. Alas, Jakey heads back to the United States and eventually Harvard. Rumors ever since percolate that they are engaged to be married. The story heats up as the couple have more interactions elsewhere. His mother, Madeline, is thrilled with the idea and is even photographed escorting the young, pretty, blonde, blue-eyed princess about to the Belmont races and several fashionable resorts, both in Europe and America, which only fuels more speculation. Then a leak in late January comes from a potential bridesmaid, messaging her Italian admiral father in Mussolini land over the pending nuptials. Attention increases on the young couple as newspapers postulate, will they or won't they be married? Mid-February to early March, 1933. Meanwhile, both of the couple's families are in Palm Beach for the winter season. Madeline and Jakey luckily avoid interacting with Vincent as he takes President-elect Franklin Roosevelt for one more fishing jaunt before the latter takes office. And afterwards, Vincent heads out on his yacht Norma Hall down to the Galapagos for another exploration along with his former brother-in-law and newly divorced Prince Serge Obolinsky. Amidst the flurry of attention, Madeline changes her mind and publicly states she thinks Jakey is too young to marry and should wait a little longer. Christina's mother, Elsie Moore, herself a Brooklyn hardware heiress and former American dollar princess or dollar duchess as the press formally called her, also denies any engagement plans and preposterous due to their young ages. Despite that the debutante ball is a signal for courtship availability, leading to marriage. In 1933, the age of consent is 21, so both Jakey, 20, and Christina, 18 or 19, are not old enough to marry without parental approval. Thus, if that is really their intentions, they are thwarted, first and foremost, by their mothers. The speculation abruptly ends on March 5, 1933, when Christina's father, Prince Don Marino Torlonia, suddenly passes away in Rome. Rumors will percolate for a month longer. Only for every rumor, there is a counter-rumor. And eventually, some old rumors might come true. It is a bit ironic that Madeline is about to cause yet another scandal in her own right, and all in the name of love again. Now, in late February 1933, amidst her son's wedding nuptial rumors, Whispers of a scandal are hinting in the gossip columns that Madeline might soon file for divorce from her second husband, William Dick. This seemingly silly, antiquated, moss-covered rumor resurfaces and is quickly dismissed by none other than Charlie Knickerbocker as something that has plagued the couple frequently over the years. 
Only there may be some truth to that rumor after all, and it is far more scandalous. The gossip colonist remarks Madeline is rarely seen out and about in the days of late. She has been keeping herself quite busy, so it seems, and that usually means with someone or something, but with whom or what is not known. What isn't publicly known is that over a year ago, on January 1932, Madeline traveled on the ocean liner Volcania and met the hunky Italian boxer Enzo Fiermonte. His last name literally means fiery mountain. Nearly penniless, Enzo is a boxer who has spent several years on the circuit in Italy and trying to break into America to intermittent and not too great a success. Immediately smitten in an age-reverse scandal as her first marriage, the married 39-year-old Madeline goes after the married Enzo, who at 24 is almost half her age. His youthful vigor, her wealth, who really pursues whom? He yields, she yields, and the tryst is so intoxicating, Madeline loses part of her senses, then pursues him relentlessly. The press picks up on her extended stay in Italy and wonders if she might once again be headed for a potential divorce like back in 1924-1925. She claims no such plans and explains she remains abroad due to an illness of one of her children, much like in 1925 when Jakey caught typhoid. Back in Florida, Madeline hires Enzo to train her sons in boxing while continuing the affair. When Jakey heads on his world tour, she visits Los Angeles during the 1932 Olympics, where she might be following Enzo around. In the meantime, another young widow who remains unmarried, Gloria Morgan Vanderbilt, is applying for an increase in allowance for her daughter, Gloria Vanderbilt. Only little Gloria's aunt, artist Gertrude Vanderbilt Whitney, and Countess Grace Vanderbilt Shechini are growing more concerned over their niece's care. Mother Gloria's twin sister, Viscountess Thelma Morgan Furness's own scandalous affair with Prince David, the Prince of Wales, future King Edward VIII, and Duke of Windsor, will soon cause little Gloria greater troubles. With so many scandals boiling to the surface, it's getting all confusing. For now, publicly, Enzo will not be mentioned with Madeline until a bit later. But those in the know know the truth. We know young lovers are impetuous, but what about those young in heart and mind, though not exactly in body? Oh, the troubles that await. Section 2. History and Historiography Love, social climbing, and fortune are such blended complications leading to the perfect storm of trouble. Socially ambitious mothers groom their daughters to appeal to rich men. Daughters marry up, but then problems arise. First, a side note. As repeatedly mentioned, names can be hard with multiple spellings trying to track down information. I have seen the following for Miss Torlonia. In older newspapers and Time magazine refer to her as Christiana, while in modern sources like Wikipedia, Christina. And both alternate with spelling CR and CHR in the first part of the name. It seems to depend on the error and source with spelling. This even happens when I look up other family members to suss out the standardized spelling to no conclusive luck and actually, quite honestly, more confusion. <sighs> the troubles of reconstructing a past and getting hung up on details. Then again, such digressions lead to interesting new pieces of information. In 1893, Madeline Talmadge Force is born in Brooklyn to the well-off William Force, who was an expressman slash postal forwarding slash shipping businessman, and Catherine Talmadge, the granddaughter of a former Brooklyn mayor. The family has two pretty daughters, older sister Catherine Force and Madeline. In 1900, they later moved to the better-off enclave, Murray Hill, New York, where their mother hopes to secure better matches. In this idyllic setting, the popular Madeline has a sweet romance with nearby resident William Dick, the future banker and heir to a sugar fortune. Only in 1911, the newly divorced 46-year-old John Jacob Astor IV, a.k.a. Colonel Jack, comes to visit friends and meets the young Madeline. Smitten, Colonel Jack pursues Madeline, 
or maybe it's Madeline who pursues him pushed by her mother to go after the really big money. Young Madeline hopes this will make her the new queen of society, as Jack's mother had been the Caroline Astor. The press quickly does Madeline the world's luckiest girl, and alternately refers to her more derisively as only a bird in a gilded cage. Immediately, their marriage is a huge scandal due to their significant age difference so recently after his divorce from his first wife, Ava Willing Lowell. Madeline is dropped from the social register and shunned in Newport, New York, and Bar Harbor societies. To let the heat die down, the newlyweds take a long honeymoon to Europe and the Mediterranean, only to return upon Madeline's pregnancy when they book passage aboard the Titanic. As previously discussed, Jack dies while Madeline survives and later gives birth to John Jacob Astor VI, a.k.a. Jakey, in August 1912. Her stepson, Vincent Astor, who's only a few months older than her, inherits the vast sum of the Astor fortune. Vincent also suspects Jakey is not an Astor by blood and will hint at the bastard lineage as a reason in his refusal to share the fortune despite Vincent having no biological children of his own. Madeline gets a very small sum in comparison with severe stipulations. Oh, how romantic to give up a fortune for love. Now, mind you, Madeline Talmadge Force Astor gives up access to the Astor home in New York and a nearly $5 million inheritance for another fortune, about $2.5 million at the time. Those are the equivalents of $141.5 million for $70.7 million in 2024. Her Astor son, Jakey, will still inherit his $3 million or $84.9 million in 2024. Not exactly going penniless, and life can be rather dull if you are cut off from zero contact of any romantic personal relationship starting around 19 years old. Can you really blame her? Still, she doesn't move on until about four years later. Even sweeter, she doesn't seem to marry for money, but for love. She marries her childhood friend and sweetheart, William Dick, in 1916. Enthusiasm and social approval of this couple restores Madeline to the social register set, though she remains fairly aloof over social approval after the previous harsh rejections. So a perfect match, right? Well, not exactly. It seems trouble haunts this couple all the way back to 1924-1925. In fact, Madeline seems to be a disaster magnet. As much as she avoids the Newport set after her remarriage, she still manages to draw attention, and nearly every mention of her or Jakey alludes back to the Titanic. In April 1924, it is noted that the Astor 840 Fifth Avenue Mansion, the one John Jacob Astor IV constructed for his mother during the Waldorf Astoria Hotel debacle, will be torn down and replaced with a 12-story apartment building. This trend marks the continual decline of the Millionaire's Row in Manhattan. The property is owned by Vincent Astor, but the article still mentions his deceased father's widow and her abandonment of the property for love. In May 1924, it is noted Madeline does not join her husband William and their two sons aboard the Aquitania, crossing the Atlantic until she recovers from an illness, the grip. On March 18, 1925, Madeline stays at the Breakers Hotel in Florida while waiting to take over her new Palm Beach home. Remarks on her slim and youthful figure are attributed to how she remains active like playing tennis and swimming. At 4.20 p.m., a fire breaks out from an electrical curling iron left on in the room occupied by Chicago Mayor Big Bill William Hills Thompson's wife, shouting in the halls alert the guests, many of whom retired to their rooms to rest before the evening activities. Thus, many in their sleeping garments and bathrobes are suddenly awakened by someone screaming fire. Only a few have enough wits to grab a few items, like jewelry. A day later, complaints will be made that personal belongings were tossed out by staff, and later an investigation will lead to a gang of 25 arrested for thefts and looting. Other guests at the time include another Titanic survivor, Margaret the unsinkable Molly Brown, the future Mrs. Ziegfeld and Wizard of Oz Glinda the Good Witch actress, Billy Burke and Marjorie Merriweather Post Hutton. Nearby the fire zone, endangered estates include those owned by E.T. Stotesbury, Joshua Cosden, and future America's Cup winner and Alva Vanderbilt Belmont's son, Harold Mike Vanderbilt. Later that year, Madeline stays in Italy, sparking rumors of a potential divorce. It will be later noted she did not attend another event while she was nursing one of her sons. She denounces the divorce chatter as nonsense. 
In September 1925, the press reports that 13-year-old Jakey is ill with typhoid in Italy, then transfers to Paris where he finally makes a recovery. Later in October 1925, it is announced again that Madeline and her husband William will be getting a divorce as she heads to Paris where the arrangements will be kept more confidential. After which, Madeline plans to devote more time to her son, Jakey. The reasons for the divorce are not clear and confuse many in her circle. Not sure when or why, but she eventually decides to return to William Dick. Though hence from then on, they will live slightly separate lives including periods of solo travel. What happens in the intervening years to 1932 are a little more of a mystery. What is later written about Madeline is more in relation to her relationships with John Jacob Astor IV and Enzo Firmante. William Dick gets off with little mention, except that he seems reasonable, kind, and stable. Which, of course, if at all true, makes for a much less salacious tale to tell. Only this storyline was to be weaved a little later as my original knowledge of this situation is around a different event over a year into the future of our current timeline. When I first learned about the public story of Madeline and Enzo is they met around 1934 when Enzo comes to train her sons, including Jakey Astor and William Dick, for boxing. It wasn't until April 2023 that I stumbled across the note they met aboard the Volcania. And in August 2023, I discover Ty's Hot Mess History YouTube channel and listen to more sordid details regarding Madeline with both her first husband, John Jacob Astor IV, and later Enzo Fiermonte. However, for our story purpose, I couldn't force the intro until I stumble across the right entry point. Only now I pick up in Charlie Knickerbocker's syndicated column that refers to Jakey's complicated nuptials with hints at Madeline's pending scandal. And as we now firmly know, things have been happening for far longer, and the worst has yet to really come out. So hang on, because there is definitely more coming. Section 3, Contemporary and Personal Relevance Scandal can be a very tricky thing to track down. So many lies, rumors, and cover-ups, it's hard to determine the specifics and the concrete. Then there are also the justifications, the gaslighting, the questions that remain, Okay, so maybe it's none of our business. But yet, somehow, it really does become our business. And nothing makes a more interesting story than one tinged with sexual scandal and the sordid messiness of life. Just look at Hulu's FX TV series Feud Season 2, Capote vs. the Swans, points out how promiscuous the upper-class women his swans were. Oh, and yeah, William Bill Paley seems to have sampled a couple of the swans at some time or another before, during, or after his marriage to Bay Paley. Sexual scandals really can take a life of their own. That can't be better illustrated than in one of the major court cases hitting the news today, the Georgia case against former President Donald Trump's interference in the 2020 presidential election. A sideshow circus has developed around the DA, Fonnie Willis, and her former lover, the lead prosecuting attorney, Nathan Wade. The sexual antics and wordplay is just spiraling poorly out of control. It's such a train wreck, I have a hard time looking away. Normally, when it comes to politics or finances, I will wait to see how things play out with the course of time. However, I cannot ignore all this hot messiness outside of the larger and more serious case at hand. Oh my god, how all this information is just pouring out is insane. People really don't like having certain details out in the public, but then it happens anyway. And we know with stories that juicy, they will inevitably get retold. Thus, there is plenty left to tell about our heirs and heiresses as scandals around love, sex, and fortunes put their messy lives on display. I'm telling you, you need to check out Ty's Hot Mess History YouTube channel. She goes into lots of scandalous details related to Madeline Talmadge Force Astor Dick, first in a multi-part on the Titanic, then Madeline's affair with Enzo Firmante, and then a whole other one focusing on her son, John Jacob Astor VI. 
though not covering all the same stories that I am telling. Ty's intense yet quick survey doesn't reveal all the little things I will point out over our series. However, she does point out some great salacious details and some other facts that I was unaware of, such as one of Jakey's tutors wrote a thinly veiled portraiture of him. Check out Ty's hot mess history. You won't be disappointed. Links in the notes and transcript. If you enjoy As the Money Burns, then please share, like, and subscribe. Next, when we return to As the Money Burns, a new leaf for your pence is on the hunt for his next fortune. But could there be a new heiress in his sight? Until then. As the Money Burns is an original podcast written, produced, and voiced by Nikki Woodard based on historical research. Archival music has been provided by Past Perfect Vintage Music. Check out their website at www.pastperfect.com. Please come visit us at As The Money Burns via Good Pods X, formerly Twitter, Facebook, now Meta, or Instagram. Transcripts, timeline, episode guide, and character bios are available at asthemoneyburns.com.